How are you guys all doing today? Coming at you with another video with the Gen 8 Red Cat. So, I'll be showing you guys a whole bunch of upgrades and stuff I've done to it. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. This is all from one place. This is all from Club 5 Racing. Um, upgrades are pretty dang good for the price. And I'll be explaining every single part that I've put on or I'm putting on. <laughs> okay, so their scaler part, their fuel doors and their handles and stuff, amazing. They look great on this thing. They actually match the everything about it. I mean, they are amazing. And there's an A and a B in their listing. And their A and their B... The only thing that's different between A and B is the fuel door. The B is like this. The A is different. Okay, so just in case you guys did not know that, I'll just let you guys know. Okay, so then we'll have go on to the next part, which are these 8 mil hexes, which we'll save for later. But they are, are pretty good. I did have a little bit of tire rub still with them, not, but not a lot. If you guys need to know any of the products, besides just what they're called, they'll be right down here. And that's all the part numbers. But I did have a little bit of rub still, but they were definitely nice. They are brass. They did put the weight where you want it, and that's down low. So the Husky Links put the weight exactly where you want it, and that's low. Um, they're heavy duty. They're heavy. They're cheap for being heavy duty links. Appared to brass, which everybody knows brass is expensive, so definitely worth every penny for the price. Um, the steering links, everything was amazing. The ends are heavy duty, hard. I mean, everything's just, you're not going to break them. I can guarantee you that. If you do, well, let me see a video or something, because that's awesome. Um, these hexes, not these hexes, these, uh, Shackles, they're pretty good. Uh, I see it on their site that somebody complained about the part of them being scaled. They're not really scale like they were saying. Um, I'll show you guys one. So, you guys see, that's what they were talking about, that right there. Yes, they don't look really scale scale, but they're strong, they're cheap. Can't complain for the price. Um, the servo rel relocation is probably the most expensive thing I've done to this whole entire build, almost, but definitely worth it. People were complaining about the geometry, you know, not fixing it and blah, 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 but I think personally, amazing. It stiffens up the frame a lot. It's aluminum, so you know you don't have no give like plastic does. Um, holds the servo amazing. Comes with all the hardware. Definitely worth it. Comes with a pretty cool sticker. <laughs> Everybody like us like stickers. Okay, then here. These are the studs. We'll talk about that more here in a minute. Because I do have two hex kits from this place. Okay, so these are the 12 mil hex with the studs. They just came out. They're new to Club 5 Racing. And if you guys need to know the part numbers for any of this, they'll be down here. Good product. Already got them installed. I'll show you guys a little bit more into them in depth. Tire foams, they're firm. Um, I probably shouldn't wear with firm, but they are way better than the factory memory foam. Way better. Especially if you don't live in Florida or Arizona where it's hot all the time. Definitely way better. Because I don't live in those states and it gets cold around here. And the factory foams will not work for me. They would just not have worked. So if you can see... They're still pretty firm. They don't have they don't have as much give as I would want them. But that's fine. I'm gonna be getting rid of these tires and rims completely. And just in case you guys are wondering, they are the factory rims. I just painted them black on the inside, took them all apart, painted the outside with some type of green coloring. Um and then painted the inside black. So they don't want chrome. So that's 
all the upgrades here. Okay, now let's get into explaining the hexes. Okay, so factory hex, 8, and then a 12. Okay, so the factory, if you can tell the height difference on them all. Definitely a height difference. Now, definitely rubbed with factory. Rubbed a little bit. Definitely ain't going to rub ever again. I mean, if you can see the height difference, that's almost almost all of it put together. So, definitely worth it. Has an Allen. Has an Allen to hold it together. So, and it still has everything's the same as factory or as the other ones, except for they're twelve. And the eight mils, no complaints at all. Worth every penny too. Okay, so all you do to put these ones on is you put the shaft, the new shaft in, which it comes with a longer shaft. I already got this one installed. You put it in, and if you can see the difference here, there is a huge difference on length. I mean, a huge difference. So if you use the factory, factory stud here, okay, factory stud. If you use it with those eight mil extensions, your little cap ain't gonna fit on your rim. It just, there's no threads there. So they came out with this, which I love. I mean, it looks great. Puts weight where you want it, even more weight, and gives you a wire stance, worth every penny. So, if you guys wanna watch here, I'll show you guys a quick, quick demo real quick. All right, so all you do is you lift this up, and tighten up your Allen here real quick. Here, I'll get you guys in frame, sorry about that. And once you get it tightened up, you just throw your rim back on. I'm sure you guys all know how to do this. But instead of trying to editing this out, I'll just do it like this for you guys. So put your rim on. Then you put your bolt on. Tighten it in. There we go. A little bit more in the video. I'm trying to make this somewhat quick for you guys. Just show you guys everything about the Gen 8 that I have done. So that's that. If you guys see there, if you guys see there, there is plenty of threads to screw onto. So you guys can take your fancy dancy little cap and just screw it on. And look at that. You have the perfect little scaler look. Appared to if you were using these you would have to have no caps whatsoever on there Okay, now you guys are wondering if you guys are wondering about anything else the top. I just painted the outside of it in black um, Stole the idea from a guy on Club 5 racing It's pretty good. I told him about it. And he's like, yeah, oh, that's funny. So I just stole his idea I told him I was going to though but I'm definitely gonna give him credit down in the description um, but yeah, got the tire mounted, got the body. This is just sharpie on for now. I'm probably going to be cutting the top completely off. Um, these I just cut out completely. Um, this here, I trimmed it so it actually looks like a wheel well, like the rear. There ain't no more overhang if you guys can tell. Um, looks pretty decent. Um, stickered it up, got rid of all the factory stickers. Personally, I think it looks more like a Bronco or a Tahoe kind of look, like an old bourbon, I guess, or a K5 Blazer. Um, otherwise, that's all the real big body mods I've done. Besides, I slammed the bumpers in as far as they'll go. Um, colored the lights. You guys can see back there, they're smoked black, painted them black with tire smoke or tent smoke. And did that in the rear too. I think it just makes it look way better. Don't got no lights yet. I don't know if I'm going to. I'm not a big light guy, so. Um, all right, let me pull the body off here real quick and we'll get into the whole description of the thing. Here we go. So, got the body off. You guys can see here, I got everything magnet. 
So I got four of them per corner. And let me tell you, these things are amazing. Rare earth magnets, I ordered them offline. They hold eight and a half pounds almost a piece. And they're just little guys too. I mean, they're just tiny. And they are amazing. No body issues. They won't fall off on you. Holds it all for you. So, if you guys are wondering what I've all got done to it, is I've got the links down here done. Let me grab some more stuff real quick. Alright, so we got the links done with the Club 5 uh, Husky links with the M4 ends. I mean, they are way heavier than factory. Way heavier. If you guys can see the offset of the extensions here, definitely worth no rub whatsoever. And these are on the big M4 links. There ain't not. They're not even close to being close to rubbing. So definitely better than factory. There's the servo relocation. If you guys can see, look how perfect the geometry is. The only thing I did not replace yet is the panhard bar. If you guys can see right there, I seen another fellow YouTuber doing this to his, building this little support bracket for this panhard bar. Definitely helps out the servo power. If this thing's moving, I mean, it just feels like you have no servo whatsoever. So definitely worth it. Um, so. That's pretty much all the stuff I've done to the lower part of it. Besides getting rid of the um, slipper clutch back there. Completely disassembled this whole entire thing from front to back. 100% disassembled. And, I mean, did it make a huge difference? I mean, I've greased everything, went through the whole entire thing. Greasing it all. I mean, it definitely helped. And don't mind all the dunk dunk noise. My neighbor is remodeling their house, having some fucking person over there doing shit. <laughs> it's annoying. Um, but definitely, definitely way nicer with these parts. So, servo, upgrade to a cheap 20 kg servo. Not bad. Um, probably be upgrading that again here very soon. Don't mind all the wiring. Uh, it's just very temporary. I just got this Hobby Wing 1080 in, fully programmable. Uh, not bad. Definitely way better than factory. Um, I got this thing on here too. I'll show you guys that. So I can actually stick stuff in there, like my ropes. Just stick her back down, and bam. And then my power is mounted up here so I can reach through the window and just hit the power button. Um, the only thing that's factory on this thing, I guess, for electronics would be the motor. Um, otherwise, that's all been gone through. Um, and I went ahead and did this with my old link. If you guys can see here, I just took off the old link, cut it down to size, re-threaded re -threaded the one side, because the other side I left the threads in, and bolted it on. So it's more like the Gen 8 Axe Addiction Edition. So... You guys can tell here. It looks pretty cool. Gives the motor definitely more clearance, which I was needing when I upgrade this motor very soon. I'll show you guys that in another video. Um, did it to the rear too, but I left this here just because I'm not 100% sure if I would like this on the rear or not. Um, it did add a little bit more body flex to the thing, but I mean, it ain't like a lot. But that's the thing I'm trying to do is get rid of as much frame flex and everything as I can. Which, if you think about it, scaly, if you're trying to think of the scale way, technically there is none on a lot of rigs. Because if you're pulling 20 pounds on one thing, on one corner of it, trying to twist the frame, you know, obviously it's going to be scale because the, the rig only weighs 8 pounds, so it's all... All it's going to have unless you're jumping the thing is have momentum force. <laughs> but anyways, got rid of the bump. First thing I did, I went to uh, uh, Dirty Donut 
No, who was it? Uh, can't remember the guy's name. I think it was Dirty Donuts RC. Yeah, Dirty Donut RC Crawlers. And I got got this here. Got rid of this. Got rid of this. Okay, so let me tell you about this real quick. I seen a YouTuber talking about this and he was not 100% correct about it. Okay, so the only difference between this and the one that's in there is the spacers, no bump, transmission gets lifted up, or transfer case. See right there, you got that material right there that gets lifted up, right here, which that does not have. See, no material. Okay, so it lifts up the transmission to add clearance to the belly, so you have no bump at all. You can tell there's absolutely no bump down there. And then it gives you these here, these little plastic tabs. Now what's nice is you don't need no bolt for when you do up tops up here. So that's definitely a bonus. And then the thing that's different here is that this has a, on the other one, this has a cutout. So it adds clearance for when you move up the transfer case. The only thing I have noticed that I have a problem with this, not having a belly bump no more, is, I'll show you. Which ain't a huge deal, because I highly doubt I'll ever have it that flexed out anyways, or that hard of a flex, I guess, or hit. When you go down, see you still got movement because I'm bottoming out because now I pulled up the transmission or transfer case even higher up into the frame. So when you slam it down, which, oh, that's not even showing it. Um, let me see here. There we go. That's a little bit better of a video, spot to video. So when you go down, see how it's hitting the drive shaft right there? And you might be saying, well, why is that? Well, because I lifted the transfer case and now it just rests there. But not a big deal. Like I said, I'll hide out I'll ever get there. The nice thing about the Club 5 links is that it adds more clearance to your belly too because it makes it more smooth and watch. So when you're going up, I'm not even rubbing on the drive shaft either way. So if you're crossing like a log or something, you have less of a chance of hitting your plastic drive shafts, which is nice. And then the belly, really smooth. I mean, there's a good transition there. The only thing that's kind of a bummer is right there. Right when they put those the little hexes there, is you'll hit them. So I'm probably gonna take the Dremel to that and file those down a little bit to get rid of that, just because the belly's a little bit more smoother. And then I cut this completely out, if you can tell. If you guys see all the other uh, Gen 8s, this right here, most of them come out like this and then up. Well, I cut it completely off. And the reason why, the reason why even before I did the 12 mil hex extensions, even before I did the eight, this thing came very close to rubbing. So I just completely cut it off. There's no point in having it. So if you guys can see here, there is plenty of clearance now for the rim and the tire to actually go in and flex without binding or hitting anything. And then I also did it to the bumper, if you can tell here too. Sorry about the terrible camera. Okay, so there. Plenty of clearance on both sides. I did that too. Both sides of the bumpers, trimmed them with the Dremel. And if you guys are new to the crawler or RC scene, definitely invest into a Dremel. I don't care if it's a $20 Dremel or not. I mean, whatever it is, it's worth every penny because it makes, it makes the experience way easier to do and I'll be investing here very soon in the future into a 3d printer 
which should definitely help out a lot too. I mean, 3D printed parts aren't as great as a molded plastic, but I mean, you can you can do whatever you want with it. I mean, you can build however you want. Go off of an idea you have to see if it actually works. And you never know, you might be able to patent it. So, so far I don't got really much into electronics. You know, $20 servo or 15 or something like that with, with the servo horn. Which ain't a bad servo horn at all. Worth every penny. Definitely a decent servo. Plenty of power. Way better than factory. The 1080... Way better, way, way better than factory. Actually has, you know, control over, you know, going slower or fast, unlike the factory one. This here, definitely worth every penny. I mean, it's fully tunable. And this is the FSGT3B Fly Sky Radio. Definitely worth every penny. I mean, it shows you voltage. You can even have different vehicles. You can do your trims. I mean, you can do anything you want on this thing. Definitely best money that I've spent on a radio. Way better than factory for sure. Uh, everything feels stronger about it. I mean, everything just. I mean, everything is just way better. And he has these down here. If you guys have not seen this yet. Definitely a good radio for the price. Um, definitely. I mean, three channel. So if you guys need more than that, probably should look somewhere else. But definitely worth it. Quick and easy to do. Comes with it. With a transmitter. The re I mean, it comes with everything you need. Transmitter, receiver. Now, is there anything I regret doing to this? Absolutely not. I mean, like I said, the bumper... Are in as far as they can go, and this one I could go, could go farther, but I mean it's as far as I can go before it starts looking really weird. But what do I think about the Club Five parts? Definitely are nice for the price. Um, if you guys see the hex extensions, they definitely stick the tires out quite a ways. Which you won't have no binding issues. Club 5, I think, have done their research for sure on the Gen 8. Same with a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people are just going crazy with this thing. And I'm liking it for the price. I mean, it was a cheap RTR, which now they just released the Axe Edition, which is just as good. I mean, just as good. But I mean, if you don't, if you don't want your if you don't want electronics, I wouldn't even do one of these. I would just go with a pack, a red cap pack, and just do it that way, build your own, which the only thing I got from this, besides the pack edition, the only thing I've used that red cat offered was the body, the tires, and the rims. That's the only thing I've used, and the motor, I guess, but that's gonna be going here soon too. So personally, money-wise, you probably would be better off doing the pack if you want to do it the way I've done it. And that just get rid of everything besides everything besides the axles, transfer case, transmission frame. I mean, that's pretty much it. So, but the nice thing about doing it this way though is you have backup parts. So I got backup tires once I get my new ones. I'll have backup. I have a backup EC. ESC, I have a backup motor, I'm gonna have a backup servo, backup links. I mean, everything's just gonna be parts just backed up for days, so. Is it worth it? To me, yes, it was worth it. Is it good at crawling? It's, I mean, it's, it's flex is good. I mean, if you think about it, it's, well, let me see here. I don't got a pop can, but that's easily over a pop can. I mean, if you can see here, that's probably eight inches, at least six to eight, give or take a flex. Um, I also have no shock oil in neither, so it drops really easily. I'm um, not a big fan of sh shock oil. I don't see why suspension should be so thick or so hard to move. 
I mean, if you think about it, in real life, this thing should not be stiffer than a rock to pick up. Because when you go over an obstacle, you should have it do this instead of trying to go over an obstacle that's just keeping it stiff the whole time. And then when it comes down, naturally, in real life, you're going to have body roll. I mean, it's just hard to prevent. Even with good shocks and everything, it's still going to have body roll. So, kind of like a harder way to do it, I guess, is I like scaling. So, I mean, when you come off a rock, you're going to have a little bit of drop and suspension give, just like all of them. So, I just took all that oil out, and bam, there we go. And they were leaking. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew that or not, but everybody says, oh, these aluminum shocks, metal shocks are amazing. Well, if you guys can see, they're all the way stended out, no oil, and leaking. Personally, not good enough for the rig. I mean, at all. I mean, at all. Even with the oil, they weren't that great. They were almost too stiff with the oil. So, if you guys like any of my videos just let me know i'll definitely let you guys know this guy here amazing he sent me these stickers definitely a sticker fanatic so if you guys got any stickers you want to send me let me know if you guys want any stickers i'll send you um club five has done an amazing job with sending stickers uh brought it up one time and they just been sending me stickers like it's nobody's business I mean, like, it's nobody's business. And I'll show you guys here real quick. Let me open my box. So if you guys see here, these are all my stickers. Which, I don't know if you guys can realize how many of that stickers that really is. But Club 5 has just knocked it out of the park. And that's the stickers they send you. So, when I bought my last couple items, I told him, I'm like, I'm not getting nothing for stickers. You think you can maybe please throw in a couple of stickers? And you know what they did? They threw in a couple stickers, <laughs> to say the least. I'll show you guys here real quick. And you got to remind yourself, though, I also bought a crap ton of parts from I mean, a crap ton. This ain't even all of them. This is probably, these are parts and pieces of ones I've used and on other projects. And I mean, so if you guys need any stickers, you let me know. I might be giving these away. So like, share, and subscribe, and I'll definitely be giving you guys some stickers. So thanks and have a great day.